So the last topic of this section is converting between rectangular and, and polar coordinates. So we'll begin by just reviewing really quickly the formulas. x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And these are the formulas to convert from polar to rectangular. And if you want to go the other way around, we have tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is how we go from rectangular to polar. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see how to use these formulas to convert full uh, equations for uh, functions from one coordinate system to the other. So example, rewrite the rectangular equation x squared plus y squared equals 6y as a polar equation. So try this for yourself. Um, just see if you can uh, play with the algebra and make this work. Okay, so we're going to start. x squared plus y squared is equal to 6y. We are converting from rectangular to polar. So we need to figure out how to turn these things into r's and thetas. So what we're going to do with this is we have these formulas. <clears throat> Let's try again. So we have these formulas over here that we just plop into. So we're going to take our things that are given right now in rectangular and turn them into polar. So r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared is equal to 6 times r sine theta. Square this out. r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta is equal to 6r sine theta. From here, we can see we can factor out an r squared and we see a familiar combination, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which we know is 1. And so we have r squared is equal to 6r sine theta, which we could... Um, you could technically try to divide this by r. You do have to worry about dividing by 0. And so it is a thing that you do have to worry about here. Um, and so the better thing to do is actually this. Instead of dividing by a variable, it's always better to move everything to one side and then factor that variable out instead. And then use the zero product property. Either r is equal to 0 or r is equal to 6 sine theta. Well, the r equals 0 case, that gives us just a point at the origin. r equals 6 sine, sine theta, this actually gets us that full circle. Now, both of these do work. This point happens to be on the circle as well, um, but this is the interesting part of it. Rewrite the polar equation r equals 3 over 1 minus 2 cosine theta as a rectangular equation. r equals 3 over 1 minus 2 cosine theta. Now this is a little bit more confusing because you don't have as obvious of a starting point as you did with the other one. Uh, so with this type of equation, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clear the fraction. And we're going to distribute. The reason why we want to do this is that this allows us to see this term right here. This is one of the two formulas for converting between us polar and um, rectangular coordinates. This is in fact just an x. And so what we have is we have r minus 2x is equal to 3. Uh, from here there's a bit of a static that you have to sort of play with to see what's happening. But what we're going to do is we're going to add to both sides. We're going to add this 2x to both sides. And we're actually going to go to square both sides. Now, why would we square both sides? Well, squaring both sides makes this isolated r squared term into an x squared plus y squared. And this is what allows us to move forward with this calculation. Uh, at this point, I would say you could leave it like this, but in theory, you actually could um, do a little bit more work with it by multiplying this right-hand side out. Uh, 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 is equal to x squared plus y squared. And you can move the terms around and, and sort of get more information out of this. It's going to be 3x squared plus 12x plus 9 minus y squared. 
uh, at, at this level, you can't actually, you may not have enough experience to be able to recognize what's happening here, but with this positive x squared and this negative y squared here, this shape turns out to be a hyperbola. Uh, all these sort of conic section things are uh, in, in a course that you might call analytic geometry, which is not something that we do here. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, you could, again, you could really just leave the conversion at this point, but I just wanted to point out that if you played around with it some more, you could actually get some more information.